So welcome to this week's hot take with very special guest Pete Kitsos from CMG Home Loans. Uh, this is a part of a series of hot takes on one of the biggest purchases that many of us will make in our lives, our home. Uh, most people are familiar with a 30 and 15 year mortgage. And for more info on that, if you're not familiar and you want a primer, look back a couple of my podcasts ago here and you can get a good primer on the difference between the two. But Pete's here today to discuss a unique mortgage product that really kind of got my mind grapes rolling around. So I looked at this personally and uh, the simulations that we ran showed that I'd be able to pay this loan off in its entirety in about 11 years rather than like the traditional 30 years, saving me hundreds of thousands and even in some cases millions of dollars in interest depending on your interest rate that you're getting. So to kick us off, Pete, why don't you give us a high level overview of what this all in one loan is? And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Absolutely, Chris. Great to be here once again. Love being on the pod. Um, so yeah, a couple of things. Simply put, the all-in-one loan is a first position HELOC. And, you know, at first sight, it seems simple enough, but the, the real power comes from the ability, uh, to repay that loan much more quickly and really repay the principal on a much more aggressive schedule than you would be able to on a 30 year fix. It does act as a true revolving line of credit, meaning as you pay that down, you're able to redraw those funds at a future date. So it really gives the, the borrower a lot more flexibility than a traditional 30 year note, right? I think one of the statistics that we look at that's very interesting is in the lifespan of a 30 year mortgage, the average individual will make enough money to repay that principal balance several times over. But during that time period, you're ending up stuck with paying the majority of that interest over the first 10 year period. So this type of product really turns that concept of debt repayment on its head and allows people to build wealth much more quickly. So would you say that it's kind of the the reverse of a, a normal 30 year mortgage where you're paying the majority of the interest here up or uh, on the back end versus a 30 year on the front end? Or is it something different, a different mechanism going on there? Well, I think it, it puts that concept you know, turns it around as far as how is interest weighted on this particular product? Well, it's, it's simple interest. So the interest is recalculated on a per diem basis. And what that means is as you pay down that principal balance, your interest that you owe on that note will automatically adjust downward versus on a 30 year amortized loan. The interest basically paid over the life of that loan is fixed and actually front loaded. Um, and you don't have any control over adjusting that schedule unless you refinance. So, you know, I, it may, it may not be exactly a reverse of the 30 year mortgage concept, but it does allow the borrower to kind of take control over the amount of interest that they're going to pay over that loan versus a 30 year you are basically, um, uh, you know, subject to the amortization of that 30 year schedule. Cool. Um, yeah, so wh why don't we get down to it and show our listeners here uh, a simulation. So there's a, a really cool website that you can run through a simulation on your own as well. Um, and we'll get we'll put that um, the link to that website down in the comments section or in the notes section. So why don't you run us through this real life example that you have here? And, and I think it'll uh, really show our listeners what's going on. Uh, yeah, and, and these simulations are, are really so powerful because it allows us to visualize, you know, all the numbers and create comparisons to a traditional mortgage. I am working with a client right now and, and these numbers are, are pulled from a live scenario. I have an individual, a, a gentleman uh, under contract right now. Um, just as a little bit of a backstory, he, is an older gentleman in his seventies, very hesitant to want to do anything, um, has a home to sell. And we were able to talk to him about this product and show him how it's actually a great fit for someone like him, right? Someone in their seventies, by the time they're done paying off a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, I mean, you know, maybe he's a hundred years old and, um, you know, I don't know if that's a realistic, uh, scenario for someone. So we really showed him how, his money can go so much further in a shorter period of time by using the all in one loan. So the basic premise of the scenario is he's purchasing a home. You can see right here, it's a primary residence. We're going to compare our new all in one loan to a traditional loan. Um, and then with the all in one loan, it is a, an adjustable rate mortgage. So we're going to set the uh, adjustment rate to one month. The 
home price of the loan is six hundred and thirty five thousand. His loan balance would be five oh eight. This would represent a twenty percent down payment. And we're going to compare our all in one loan to a thirty year fixed rate loan at a rate of seven percent, which from today is actually slightly lower than what the average rate is. So we're we're looking at a comparison loan payment of about thirty three seventy nine. And we're going to move forward with these assumptions. In the next page of the simulator, we're going to be able to show what his potential monthly deposits look like. So in this case, we've got a couple and they're earning about $120,000 a year combined. So we're going to show $10,000 being deposited monthly. In this case, he has a home to sell. So that was one of the big reasons we recommended this as a really great option for him because he wasn't sure if he was able to purchase before buying. And in this case, we were able to show him, well, you're able to purchase the home and then take that proceeds after the home sells in the second month and deposit that into the loan. And you'll be able to see the results here shortly. So we've got That's the home really sale cool. proceeds. Yeah, absolutely. And you can you can do any combination of these types of one-time deposits or maybe in some cases, and I, I see this often as well, uh, individuals receive bonus checks throughout the year, right? So you could potentially simulate, what if I put my large bonus or maybe I'm liquidating some RSUs or something like that? You you can show how these different scenarios based on an individual would play out. So in this case, we've got the home proceeds plus the normal monthly income. And then what we want to do so is we want to figure really out. Quick, if you don't mind going yeah. back to that last page. So um so uh, this this could be a good fit for I mean obviously this person has to have some kind of a down payment uh, already saved up so not relying on the proceeds from the sale of the home to make sure. the down payment but they also don't want to you know uh, they they want to apply the equity that they've already built up in their old house to apply it towards their new house and, and end up reducing their their total mortgage interest cost over time so Exactly. And, and you know, Chris, to that point of needing the down payment saved up, here's what we did for this individual, actually. So the 200000 um is actually after he repays the primary mortgage. Plus, we ended up putting a home equity line of credit for the 20% down payment. So he was able to borrow from a home equity line of credit, still net two hundred thousand after everything is paid off, oh, um, and, and you know roll that just right into the purchase. So it, it was kind of a, a multi pronged approach here with us setting up the HELOC, giving him that money for the down payment, and then calculating after he walked away from the sale, you know what amount of money he would have left over to apply towards that uh, principal balance. Uh, obviously, this individual you know, had purchased their home many, many years ago and has a ton of equity built up, but was in a position of not being sure, you know, if they were financially able to make a move in this high interest rate environment. And with this program, we were able to uh, basically show him that that this scenario is very doable and actually more affordable than he originally thought. So with these assumptions, we'll move on to the next uh, page. And this page is for us to determine outside of your housing expenses, what are your fixed monthly expenses, right? So we want to establish what a regular monthly expenses look like so we can determine what amount uh, is left over from the individual's income. So in this case, I'm, I've got an individual and 4,500 is the estimate we used. Granted, this was on the high end for this person. We wanted to take a more conservative approach. Um, so what we're looking at is a leftover amount on a monthly basis of about twelve ninety five. Let's call it right. So this would be potentially the amount of additional principal he could pay on a monthly basis. Uh, with that, we're going to calculate, and in this example, we're going to be able to show that all things being equal, he would be able to pay off the all in one loan in seven point seven years, saving almost. $600,000 in interest as compared to a 30 year fixed rate. You see standard 360 payments. Look at the total expense, right? This is the number that yeah, you really want to highlight. Yeah. Right. You're paying over a million dollars. You're paying basically double what the property was worth in just interest payments over this 30 year period. Well, I mean, well over double of what the, the loan value that was initially exactly taken that five, exactly. I mean, it's two, three hundred thousand dollars or 200,000 something more than what they even borrowed. So 
Yeah, th- I mean, th- you pay a lot of interest on a thirty-year mortgage, although your payment in the short term is is kind of smaller, you know. And that's that's really, I think, what drives a lot of that, um, or a lot of people towards that thirty-year mortgage is affordability. But over time, if we're looking at like the most efficient use of the the limited resources that are going to pass through our hands during our working years, thirty-year mm-hmm. mortgages start to look less and less appealing. Absolutely. And, and it really just elongates the period of time that you're having to make these payments for. And, and as you know, in your line of work, you know, co- opportunity cost and, and uh, timing is, is so critical. The earlier you can have that money invested in working for you and compounded, you know, the, the greater chance and greater opportunity you have to build wealth. One of the tools that I, I like, so there's all different types of uh, tabs down here that you can click and, and you can see um, different scenarios on paying down. Them. This is my favorite tab right here. So the wealth accumulation, because what this does is it shows basically what you could do with that money in the interim time. So if you started investing your money once the loan is paid off in year 7.7, and let's say you were investing, you know, this amount is, is going to be based on whatever is remaining without having the monthly mortgage payment. Um, so we're going to say we're invested in a fund that's compounding monthly at 5%. The home is appreciating at 3%. I mean, just flip over here and you can see. So if you're between year 7.7 or month 93 to let's call it month 360, just to simulate what could happen over the 30 year period that you would be in the loan comparatively, you would be reinvesting the money basically for 23 years and you would be able to accrue an account balance of $1.6 million, right? So it seems kind of staggering, but the idea is over the 23 years that you would potentially be paying a mortgage, you could take that same money and apply it into an investment account that is going to compound much more quickly, right? Than, than something else. So we're going to pair that with the home value appreciation. And you can see, I mean, the numbers again feel staggering, but the reality is over a lifetime, this is, this is a really reasonable prospect for someone. Yeah. And, and um, speaking of reasonable as well, just for my listeners out there, the assumption, the assumption of a 5% investment return over time is considerably lower than even like Mm -hmm. just a moderately blended portfolio over the last 30 years or something like that. So, so you're even taking some, you know, conservative steps here to sort of, you know, or conservative assumptions on what the investment return is going to be to even get that number that you've said a few times is staggering, right? We can even adjust some of these numbers, right? So I think, okay, we'll even take a different approach because, for example, maybe I'm not going to be in the home for 30 years. So we're going to say between year 7.7 and year 15. So I'll adjust this all the way down to 180 months. And that'll give us basically a seven to eight year horizon on, you know, what could I do for that eight year period and how could I grow my portfolio? Um, so if you adjusted this down to year 15, so we're at month 180, and why don't we adjust this to maybe a more market standard of 7% and we'll, we'll leave the home appreciation where it is. Okay. So in this case, not as far out of a time frame, but the reality is over an eight year period or even less, it's actually seven, it would be 7.3 years. If you took the money that you were paying the mortgage with, and invested that, you could accrue an account balance of almost $400,000. And so this time frame is much more reasonable for a lot of people, right? Thinking out 30 years is a big number. Thinking out 15 years, very reasonable. And you can just look at how much you've grown your wealth. So you came into this with a home value of $635,000 and you're walking away basically almost doubling that initial valuation without having any debt as well, right? That's the other key. In this scenario, we no longer have any debt. And what that means is you can actually borrow against that home equity line of credit up to the original amount, right? So up to the 508,000, you have access to that equity if you needed to do repairs, if you needed to you know, pay for college, all of those things while you're growing your wealth. So I, I think... Um, the benefits are, are really in wealth building. When I look at this tool, I talk to people. It's funny because, um, you know, there's a lot of objection around interest rates, but the reality is if you can pay the loan off in a more, 
in a quicker schedule, you actually begin saving versus paying at a lower interest rate for yeah, a so longer period paying, of time. If you're paying 5% for five years instead of 25% for 30 years, right? Just to make an extreme example, you're better off mm-hmm. on, or, or maybe the inverse is what I meant to say. So you're 25% for five years instead of, uh, you know, 5% for 30 years. It's, it's, it's a, the trade off exactly. somewhere, right? Exactly. And if I yeah. can have you actually, so this is kind of a unique specific client, uh, here with the extra $200,000 it's coming in in a lump sum, but mm-hmm. I want to give my uh, listeners and watchers here a idea of somebody that might be doing this as their first, uh, mortgage, right? And so somebody yeah. that might not have that home equity to apply to it in one lump sum. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know, I had I I closed uh, with a first time home buyer on um, April twenty sixth. It was a first time buyer. This scenario, um, this individual, he he had been renting for a while. He came to me, and the first question he asked is, "Show me how much money on a monthly basis I'm throwing away." Right. So he wanted me to give him a breakout of what is the interest versus the principal amount that he's paying. And what we did in that situation is we looked at the amortization of the loans. We looked at how much is going towards principal versus how much is going towards interest on a monthly basis over the first 24 months of the loan. And, you know, those numbers staggering in itself. And I, I basically compared that to what would it look like in an all in one loan. He was a first time buyer, very hesitant about buying after he saw the all in one loan and the interest savings. He decided to buy a house and he closed with the all in one loan. So, the power of the education is key. So we'll we'll go with a similar situation. This is an individual. He was a, yeah, we, a single so mind, guy. If we just leave everything just the same, so we can still see yeah. like the same client, just one that you know doesn't Great. necessarily have that two hundred thousand, and then uh, maybe pop over to that results or. Let's run this. So yeah, ten thousand. This is a very similar to the first time buyer I worked with. This was his profile hit monthly expenses. Do we want to leave these the same as well? Yeah, let's let, uh, leave it the same just to see like the difference. Cause it was that 7.7 yeah. 7 year payoff schedule versus the, let's versus see this one. And maybe it's just to, to uh, tickle my curiosity, but I want to see what yeah. the impact of that is. So, so it's certainly not 7.7 7 years, but, but 11 extra years of not having to pay that mortgage and being able to take that extra money that you're paying towards that mortgage and put it into some kind of a savings account can be pretty impactful. So it's still $150,000 total savings over time. So, and it gives you the ability to redraw that money, right? So the other key is the money is not lost in, in the loan somewhere and you have to reapply for a mortgage. If you needed to redraw any of this principal balance, you would be able to do that. Um, if you need to invest or, or you wanted to reallocate those funds somewhere else. So I think that outside of just the interest that you're saving, the flexibility of having access to that money when you need it in a, in a reasonable time frame versus having to apply for a mortgage and do an appraisal, right? So this gives borrowers control over their equity instantly. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things that I felt was really compelling here as well. Not only like, you know, potentially funding college education for my daughter, but, but utilizing that equity that I've built up to then redeploy into purchasing potentially a vacation home in five years or something mm-hmm. like that. So, so yeah, I, I thought it was really cool the the flexibility and, and kind of why I asked you to come in here today. So, um, so in closing, uh, why don't you tell us like, like this product might not be a good fit for some people might be the best option in the world for others. So what kinds of borrowers do you think would be a good fit for this versus a traditional 30 year mortgage? Yeah, great question. Um, so the 30 year mortgage has its place, right? I kind of look at the 30 year mortgage as maybe uh, training wheels and, and we are going to put people who are newer to borrowing into a 30 year or people who are maybe, um, less familiar with repaying. I think this is a product, although it's not for everyone, everyone would benefit from knowing it's available, but who the ideal client would be would be someone who's positive with their monthly cash flow, someone who understands how to manage and repay debt, someone who probably has borrowed money already in the past and has demonstrated the ability to repay that debt, um, and, and someone who maybe is a little bit more financially savvy and, and understands the implications of interest cost versus interest rate. Um, but again, I think it would benefit that everyone knows about this product because maybe today you're not in the position of of having this be the ideal option for you. But at some point in the future, 
if you would like to start building wealth, especially more quickly, this could be the best option for you. Awesome. Well, hey, Pete, I really want to thank you for uh, taking the time today to explain this to me and my listeners. Uh, me again and my listeners probably for the first time. Uh, very unique product here and uh, just giving people an idea that you know you, you don't always have to just go with the normal 30-year mortgage that your dad, mom and dad did when they bought their <laughs> house. So, um, so, hey, thanks again, Pete. And that's it for this week's Hot Take. Um, uh, uh, please like and subscribe for more compelling content from me, our guests, and other contributors here on Bullet Wealth. And uh, check out our merch page. We got some really cool stuff coming out, um, uh, landing pretty soon, some limited edition things. And as always, this does not constitute financial advice. So please be sure to consult a professional or team of professionals before making any financial decisions. All right. Hey, take care, everybody. See you later, Pete. I'll talk to you soon.